Hey folks, I'm Rob Tatro. Today we're talking about knowing what you own in your investment portfolio and why I think it's important because I've seen too many people lose money because they didn't know what they own. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. And please comment, subscribe, like, and share. We would love to hear from you. If you'd like to speak to me directly, go to www.speaktorob.com, fill out the consultation form, and we'll be chatting in no time. All right, your investments. You don't actually know what you own. You take a look at your statement and you're just clueless. You're baffled. You have no clue. Should that matter? Does it matter? I say yes. I've seen so many people come into my office. They show me a statement. I ask them a basic question. What do you own in your portfolio? And I see the blank look on their face. I don't know. I think I have mutual funds, I think. I don't know. Maybe some stocks in there. I think I own RSPs. So first of all, to clarify, I think you guys know this by now, but if not, an RSP is not an investment, right? An RSP is an actual account. A TFSA is not an investment. See, a lot of the institutions, the financial institutions, have confused people by offering you know, specials on RSP term deposits. So you know, invest now in an RSP term deposit and get 2.7%. So people will think they're actually investing in an RSP, but they're not. They're investing in a term deposit, which is in an RSP account. So the account could be anything, an RSP, a TFSA, a RIF, a Lira, a joint account, an RESP. Those are all different account types. The actual investments that go in the account types, those can range from you know, guaranteed investments, to guaranteed investment certificates, to bonds, to preferred shares, to stocks, to derivatives on stocks, to you know, private placements, options, all sorts of stuff you can put in an investment. Now, if you've never heard of most of those things, you know, don't, don't feel terrible be, because of that, because a lot of people don't know what most of those are. But you've probably heard of mutual funds, stocks, and bonds at some point in your life. So if, you own, if you're new to investing and you go and you're starting out in investing and you're placing your first money uh, with a financial institution, there's a good chance you're probably going to own a mutual fund. So a mutual fund is a trust that owns different securities inside the trust and you own units of the trust. So you effectively own a sliver of a pool of money which owns a bunch of different stocks and bonds. So that's a mutual fund. So most mutual funds are licensed, they're on the shelf, there's usually a process of review by the financial institution, so uh, generally that will be kind of an introductory investment. What the, the problem that I often see is people will be investing uh, completely on the basis of either someone else's suggestion or they won't actually know what they're investing in. So if you've ever invested in a private placement where you're signing a form that says you may lose all your money and you don't actually understand what you're actually investing in, what do I actually own here? Do I own a share of this company and what is this company and where are the financials of this company? If you can't explain that, if you can't explain to someone what you own, you shouldn't be, in my opinion, you shouldn't be signing forms that says you might lose all your money. It's very, I think it's very important to try to at least be able to verbalize what you own. And even if that simply means I own stocks, I own bonds, and I have some mutual funds, and at least you can say I own some Canadian and U.S. securities, well, that's a start. A lot of people will sometimes venture away from their comfort zone and on a recommendation from a friend, and they will put a large or a big chunk of money. Well, that is speculating, right? So it's, it's okay to speculate if, you're, if it's within your risk tolerance, if you're able to stomach the losses, you could actually lose all that money, and it makes sense for you given where you are in your life. But if it doesn't, you shouldn't be speculating. And if you're not sure if you sp should be speculating, well, you should definitely have a sit down, have a chat with someone like me. You should go to speaktorob.com, you should fill out the consultation form, and you, should, you and I should have a chat looking at your statement and going, does this make sense that I own this? Does, this, you know, is it, does it make sense given my risk tolerance, given where I'm at in my life? Is it in the right account, right? Because the different tax implications of owning different securities in different accounts matters. It absolutely does matter because a taxable investment in an RSP makes sense, but a taxable investment in a non-registered account, that you're paying tax on that. The income that's being generated from that income is taxable in your name. So that means you're adding to your income burden. You're adding to your tax burden. So that definitely matters. So you should be able to explain what you own. 
if you don't understand something like a flow through, if someone's ever presented to you a complicated flow through scheme and you don't understand it, don't invest in it. If you're unsure if you should be doing a private placement and the person who's selling it to you can't explain it to you, don't invest in it. If you're buying a derivative, uh, maybe a, uh, like a, an option or a future or a call or a put and you actually can't explain what you own and what you're doing, don't invest in it. If you're doing uh, maybe a note of some sort that's got a really complicated payout structure and you're not able to understand how that pay structure is, don't invest in it. Ideally, the best way for you to protect yourself in these situations, if you're not sure, is to work with a, with a fiduciary, a portfolio manager who owes you a fiduciary obligation. That way, every action in your portfolio, every investment is made with your best interest. So. A fiduciary must always act in the best interest of the client and the client must always come first. So I suggest deal with, deal with a fiduciary. You're not going to have to worry about understanding investments, investing in stuff that you don't know and don't appreciate. It's likely going to save you some money, some headaches and some time down the line as you're trying to unwind these losing positions. Listen folks, I know that was complicated today and that was a deep topic. But if you want to talk more about this, if you want to chat more about this, please go to www.speaktorob.com, fill out the form, and we'll be chatting in no time. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group here at Canic Genuity. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share. We would love to hear from you. Give us your thoughts, and thanks for taking the time today. Have a great day.